Uh, my name is Ibundoi, and, and I'm a self-taught artist. I do glass painting. I'm a I'm a glass painter. So I've been doing glass painting for over twenty for over twenty something years. So I'm originally from uh, from from Senegal, and then as a kid, I saw my mother sh showing. She's she got a big showing business, and my grandmother was a tie dye artist. So I grew up with art and cohabited with color. And I live in Dakar in the suburb of Peking, where there's like a lot of a lot of artists. And an art was part of a daily life. We I was seeing art everywhere in, in Peking and in, in Dakar. So as a kid, I started like showing. Like uh, when at any time my mother had like scrap scraps of um, fabric, I will do some like patchwork. I cut them and show them and give them to my brother to, to sell. And for me to learn colors, my mother used to send me to buy her thread or like buttons or zip. And when she would give me the zip or give me like the thread and say, if you go, you compare the colors. There are several kinds of red and several kinds of yellow. So I have to compare. That's when I know that there's not only one blue or one green or one red, I would compare. And she would usually send me when it is time to play, so that I will rush and come back and play soccer. Uh -huh. It was like the fastest time for me to go and, and get um, what she wanted to do. And then I always, if I remember, I always liked drawing because I used to see also my grandmother who used to do a lot of needlework. She would draw like her own patterns on piece of fabric. And, and, and that's when I was really involved in it. And for me to learn drawing, I think I told it to myself because I used to take like carbon paper, put it like on a drawing and trace it with like a piece of wood or stick to have the image. But in the 80s, there was a big movement in Senegal, which was called the Set Settle. Set Settle is like a cleanup operation to clean up and to do some murals. By the time the young people of that country had a problem with the government. And the president of the country gave a speech and said, the youth are not conscious. And we created this kind of a conscious movement to show him that what he was saying was not true. And we volunteered to clean the whole town because by the time that guy was really, was really dirty. There were garbage everywhere and there was no mural and nothing. And like the community contributed to give the artist money. We bought our own paint and start doing murals. Like within two months, the movement gained like an international level. We have like um, a lot of artists from Europe. We have like some intelligence crew from all over the world coming to Senegal to interview us and document what we were, what we were doing. But when the, real, the government stepped in and started like giving people money, founding the operation, we all like stepped back because the movement has like three functions, like to teach people psychologically, mentally and physically how to keep their environment and how to keep the community. And at the same time, we were trying to involve the youth into that movement so that we will control the destiny of our city and not lie on, on, any, kind of, uh, on any kind of government, And which was like a very successful movement. And then there was like a lot of documentaries, like even there was a book which was written about um, that movement. Uh, that movement was in 19, um, 1980, 1989, 1987. And that gave me really good motivation to really get involved into art. Because I used to paint, but for myself. And anytime I painted something, my friends would want to get it and I would give it to free. I would give it to them free. But when I did some mural and I noticed that term, that there were people interested in, in that term, mural and I get paid, I was like, this is a serious thing. And I started like, um, and I started like, and I kept on painting and I never stopped since then. And from mural, I switched to glass painting. Um, glass painting is uh, one of the first painting style introduced in uh, Senegal in the um, late, late 9th century, early 20th century. And it is a technique from the middle, from the Middle East. It is brought to Senegal via North Africa by people who went to pilgrimage. 
And it used to be traditional. It was only traditional glass painting. But in the, but in the course of years, the techniques revolve and change. And because after the traditional glass painting, we had like what we call the modern glass painting, which was done by people who have a fine art training. And then came my generation. The generation was like a generation which didn't respect any norms of any, like um, any, any technique of glass painting. Like for me, when I was doing it, like my first show was in 1997. So when I came in, everybody was doing the same. And I was like, I want to do something new. And I started layering pieces of glass. I would work on, piece, on one piece of glass, I would break it and like lay it on other pieces. And it was called the technique of broken glass. It was more about like breaking pieces of glass and layering them which was the reflection of society and, and community, because we all once in our lifetime have broken hearts, broken promises, broken friendship, broken relationship, and the world which is like breaking apart. That's why I was doing this kind of glass painting. When a lot of people see it, they think like um, it was broken by mistake, by mistake, but I was purposely breaking my pieces of glass in order to reflect what I was, how I was seeing um, community and, and society. But, um, and, and then I came here and from that, I kept on doing it and showing it. And the first time I came here, I came to teach in a special need camp where I was dealing with people with disability, multi-tradition, behavior problem, short attention span. So it, I was in New Hampshire. I took there for, for three months. And after that, um, I moved to Rhode Island where I teach kids with um, kids at risk. So I did uh, like a lot of work. I did a lot of workshop with them. And then ever since that, I've been, I've been teaching, doing workshop and shows and giving lectures in universities, colleges, kindergartens, and, and doing a lot of work with special needs, you know, libraries. So I teach everywhere in the park, in the garden, on the street. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because um, art for art for you, art is for everybody. Art for is is for everybody. Um, in Africa, you would see like an artist or a carver under a tree working because he doesn't have a studio. They they don't have this concept of having a studio and um, hiding what you're doing. It's like sharing your knowledge. And when you doing your things publicly, your art publicly, kids might be interested in that. And that will grow like a, a desire for them to get involved in, in what you're doing. And mostly like in Africa, that's how it goes on with people doing tie dye, with people doing um, carving. When I was, um, there, I had a, I was working with a lot of people, but I was mostly doing glass, teaching glass painting to women, because there were not a lot of women doing glass painting. And I opened my studio to women who were like doing glass painting. And then, when they mastered the technique, I got them a show. There was one friend of mine. It's a, it's a promoter, art promoter, Dawid Ja, who had a show at a center. It's called Blessed Singer. So by the time I was working with an artist called Jay Fowl and this Limsey, I get them involved. And in that show, there was like um, a lot of female artists doing glass painting. And that's like uh, brought the desire for other women to do it. And even when I left um, Africa to came here, one of them, Jay Fowl, went to fine art and then had a solo show in Germany. This Limsey moved to another African country. It was just like a model of taking the art out and helping and helping people. And when I was also African in terms of teaching, I taught glass painting at the YMCA, but I was dealing with, with street children. Like I would volunteer for, I volunteered for several years. Like every uh, Wednesday I have like a lot of kids. And at a, at a certain time I couldn't handle the kids. What I did was I, and trained all the volunteers to help me with the kids because they wanted to make, they wanted to uh, raise money 
for the uh, for the art events. So I can other volunteers who help me to handle it. And the kids made a lot of glass painting, and that was those pieces were shown, and that helped them to make money for the for the events. Yeah, and um, um, I was I was earlier saying that I was invi invited to be part of the vinyl of Afri vinyl African art or the vinyl African art, which takes place every every other year. It's one of the major African contemporary art show in, in Africa, it's mostly in, in Senegal, uh, which started in 1990. It's been going on since 1990. When it first started, it was the vinyl of literature and art, but now it's more focused. Since 19, 1966, the vinyl has been focused on African contemporary contemporary art. So I'm going to show you some of the um, some pictures that I um, took when I went to the um, to the vinyl, and it started over here in front of the museum, and they. Oh, no, it's not that. <laughs> Why is she throwing me away? <laughs> you know, and uh, Senegal recently has the, uh, they, they built a museum of African civilization. And this is, and this is which it's a really big museum. I was, I was impressed when I, uh, when I went there. And that's where we had, um, that's where we had a show. So, got some pictures over here. Okay, let's start with this. That was on the on the streets of Africa. So, with the car rapid, the car rapid is um, a public transportation, and you see it's decorated, and they sometimes have proverbs written on it. It's uh, it's a piece of art. You see how colorful it is. <laughs> it's going to be a challenge, right? You want me to scroll through while you're talking? Yeah. Okay, that's uh, in front of the museum mm -hmm. over here. It's a really modern museum, and that's and this year they had the first. They organized there the first vinyl of an African art. <laughs> and when we went to the vinyl, we were amazed because there were like over 400, 400 shows in, in all over in all over the car. This is um yeah, this is another building. They have this um this is a performance center. And in one place they put like a performance center and a, and a museum. So they have a lot of concerts um, over over here. Uh, that's um, a picture of me inside um, inside the museum of African civilization in Senegal. You know, and it's, it's amazing because um, they call it like the vinyl of an African art, but um, it's not. Exactly, it's not only for African art because when we went there, we saw the Chinese had a pavilion and they had a show. They had guests from pavilion, uh, from from. Uh, um, this is a piece I I showed. I had like two big pieces, so I made the pieces over here and sent them to, to um, to Senegal. Yeah, it's huge. This is what about twelve feet by ten feet. Wow. Yeah. No, it's um, it's canvas, because I'm a multimedia. I do glass painting and uh, and 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 glass. This is one of the pieces uh, I had. I was saying earlier they call it vinyl of an African art, but everybody is involved in it. It's a better picture. Yes, a better picture. Yeah, and um, and what's amazing is that you see people from uh, from everywhere. So when we were in Dakar, we got a chance to see black Russians, 
we didn't know that there were association of black Russians and wow. in, in Senegal. And we see black Germans, you know, we see artists like from everywhere. And I, we met a lot of artists from, uh, from here, from the US. And, and then we also met artists um, that were from, uh, were from other parts of, um, of the United States and, and, and Europe. Okay. This is a, a bigger picture of. Um, this is another. Yeah. It's a bigger picture. This one is um, nine feet by twelve. It's a huge one. It's like a. It's like a mural. And it's a collage fabric, as you can see. I did collage fabric on it and um an acrylic on canvas and there's a lot of patterns which i have um created so i'm also inspired by fabric and um, in patterns in this work okay and yeah yeah and, and then so what is interesting is this is that there's a lot of uh, a lot of connection you meet like a lot of galleries you meet curators, you meet artists from other. For instance, this guy is a Senegalese um, artist and what is it? Artist and musician. So he lives in Paris. So for years we've met on uh, on like uh, on the web. We never met until <laughs> we met in the car. At home. At home, yeah. And we had a great um, we had a great opening with the president of Senegal who was there, Makisal, who have been doing good for the art. He's he's here, so we we uh, he came to the opening of the of the vinyl. And you got Masamba, who is also the curator, the curator and a teacher at the University of uh, of Dakar. So it's one of the biggest with one of the biggest events is where all the artists from the diaspora will come. This is the president of Senegal over here and I was showing and talking about um, talking about my art to him. And yeah, this is one of the biggest art events in, in, in Africa, in, in Europe, because it's, some, it's, it's always difficult for Africans to have great shows in Europe and even here in the United States. That's why this platform was organized in order to promote African culture and African art. But when it was created, so we have people who were like, okay, what does it take to be an African artist? Should you have like an African father, an African mother? What, should you be eating like African food and wearing African clothes or having an African passport? And some white ladies were like, how about us living in Africa and got married with African, with Africans? And our kids are Africans. <laughs> and it becomes confusing because there are no limits in art. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes like uh, open up to, to everybody. You have two kinds of vinyl, the vinyl in, which is organized by the government, and you got the vinyl off. Like as an artist, I can open my space, have a gallery and invite people. That's why it ended up being like 400 shows in one country and you cannot go to all the events because there's every night every night there's something there's something going on and there's music there's like um, gallery talks there's like conferences it's 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 very interesting this is something that i would recommend to to all artists to go and um and experience because it's a it's a very it's very important for for artists yeah you also really have shards here that sound like uh, terminating one. Okay, now, so any any questions? What's the name of the library? The museum? Uh, museum uh, of African Civilizations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we also have the, uh, we also have what they call the Village des Arts. Village des Arts is like a big place it has 52 studios given to the artists by the government. When it started, they don't pay rent, they don't pay anything. But I think 
every year they have to give one piece of art which is going to be put into auction for the maintenance of the building mm -hmm. so we we get a chance to it's so cool it's an installation you have 52 studios and art has been there since like 1990 it's a very interesting place uh, with a show with the space of Musa Safo, he's a glass artist and also a mixed media artist. That's that's his work. So those of you who came to the class about the Astro Gate, you could see where he gets a lot of his inspiration. From, yeah, from but but this this artist yeah. is not about. They don't think about like the buyer what the buyer needs, but they do in order to wait for the buyer to need it. So um, this is what it is, and to remind you, and um, we, our first president, which was who was Senghor, organized the first festival of black art in Senegal in 1966, where he had like Elvin Ali was there, and uh, a lot of people, a lot of people from these uh, African American diaspora was there. Is that the one Picasso came? Yeah, Picasso um, showed in that part, but 1972. And then recently, and we went at the Biennale. So there was a Picasso show at the uh, at the Biennale when we went there. So we visited the Picasso show, you know. So Senegal has been always like a country of art and welcoming for artists. And there's a lot of African artists from all the African countries. I mean, living in there. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I grew up, and then. Awesome. You know, any question? How do you spell BNR? The next one is going to be in 2024. Yeah. It's going to be in 20. Margot. Hmm? Yeah. Margot, Margo, yes. Go ahead. How do you spell BNR? I A N. B I N N A L. No. Yeah. Want me to spell? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. B, B I B I E N N N N A L. Okay. Thanks. I don't think that's right, but that's that's pretty good. Yeah. That's oh, close oh, the, enough. The duck hard, you know. <laughs> yeah. Close enough to serve. Okay. Yes. I okay. wish it, maybe one day Ibu can come and do a whole two hours talking about Senegal and we'll have it set up properly so we can really show the pictures, the pictures. So on we, the big screen. We took a lot of pictures. That would be cool. Artists. Okay. Yeah. So now we're gonna move on to um, the glass painting jars. Can I have some jars? Yeah. Ready? So yeah. uh, if you can set up the camera now, so um, I'm going to show you what we're going to do today, because I think some of you have already done my uh, flat glass painting um, workshop. But I, when I started glass painting, I didn't want to really get stuck into doing pictures, but I wanted to explore it and do something else. The reason why I started creating glass painting plates in 1990, 1998, and then 1997, and then I started doing like a glass painting jars. But the lesson I'm gonna teach today is how to paint inside a jar. If you hear that, you're gonna think it's difficult, but it's really easy once when you get started. Um, I'm gonna grab one jar or two and show you. This, this is um, a flat glass painting. Well, the um, it consists of drawing first in the back of the glass, of the piece of glass with, uh, with a marker or like an ink pen. And after you draw, you do, you paint the details. Right here, I started with the eyes. I started painting with the eyes. And the eyes, I started painting like everything that is white. And then I was coming down to like paint the whole the whole person. 
in glass painting, the uh, the background comes last compared to canvas or paper where you do the background first. But here you paint the detail first, and after painting the detail, you um, you you do the glass, you do the um, the background last. So I'm gonna also. This is uh, like the flat glass painting, and I have um, what I call the jar painting. It is a jar, and uh, I paint inside the jar. But before painting inside, I did the drawing inside. You see, so you see the black lines. These are the uh, the markers drawing the lines, and after I paint the lines, I paint the details. And after the details, I wait until it's dry and I paint the background. This one is more figurative, as you can see over here. But I have another one which I call as scratching. But here, I put the paint, I put like a black paint first. And I just turn the bottles and have this form. I'm looking, I'm not looking for any kind of form, but I will just put the paint and like stir it and turn it around. And after I have this form, I will wait until it's dry. And I will take the other side of the pen brush and start scratching. That's why I have this line. And after I scratch, uh, what I do is I, I let it dry. And when it is dry, I paint the background. Uh, and here is with, uh, with ink, I just like, do the drawings inside. Just paint in the, put the paint brush and did the drawings and wait till the first layer is dry and I put the second layer. Because you always have like first layer and second layer. You cannot put the second layer until the first layer is dry. That's what it is. You see? This one is very, is very simple. And here is the sand. I just put the paint. It was just very watery, and I turn it, and you see the forms I have. I think I did some, some, some more drawings. You see, and the whole process is did is done in the in the inside. The whole process, but you just let the first the first layer to be dry, and then you paint the second layer. And this is what we're going to be doing today. So I think I'm going to demonstrate. I'm going to do like a demonstration. And then you will see how I paint inside the jar. And from there, we'll get going. OK. OK. Yeah, that's, um, um, that's how it's going to be going on. And um, for like the drawings, you have two options. I have some prints that I can give you. So you can choose which um, prints you want to use or you can um, use your own imagination. If you want to draw faces or whatever you want to do, you're welcome. If you want to draw lines, this kind of patterns, it's okay, good. And if you want to put like the black paint first or any kind of color you want to put, and then you wait until it's kind of dry, and you scratch it. You see here, I scratch it with the uh, with the other side of the brush to have this to have this form. Then you have first choice, second, third, and fourth. And maybe you can create your own choice too. <laughs> you know, that's uh, how it's gonna be going on. Any any questions? Choose uh... <laughs> <laughs> you, you just like um you just like see okay so folks here, you're going to be able to see what he's doing on the screen, as well as with his hands. 
How you draw? You just put it in the triangle. Or the the But um, I would advise you not to write because if you write in pain, last time thing, you write that word. For instance, I'm writing my name. I. I read, I read it that word. Yeah, because you write here and you see it. If you're writing, it's going to be it's going to be that word. So if you can't do that, it's free. Or if you can't avoid writing that word, it's there. And this is how um, I uh, read it. Now, like, like, like the paint, for instance, I also, I'm also going to put it like this. And use a little bit of strength so that it is not going to break. So I'm trying to go ahead and put it in there. Do you do the large background or the tiny details? The tiny details first. You see? Mm -hmm. That works to what I usually tell you in class. Is when you're doing the tiny shape first. Yes, right, right. Yeah, down there. More and more and more. Yeah. And, and now. The three. Yeah. And then go towards the camera. Come down a little more. Just so tall. There you go. Move in. There you go. Yeah. 
Yes. Like everything is done in the loop type. So if you're comfortable with putting it down on the uh, on the table, it's all right. If you can come, if you're comfortable with holding it like this, it's all right. You can you can do it. Like if you just put it like this, wrap it out, and and you can. And if you want to look, you just like control it like this. You hide it to see. <laughs> if you're inside and you have it to the front, nobody will see. It's like that. It, it's a tricky, it's a tricky technique. But they have to go like step by step. And if you think you have a design that you want to do, you can try to write it, to draw it on a piece of paper. Then don't make it like too big and you put it like this. And you do the draw in the print. Okay. Ah, ah. Like in this one, for instance, this man, how long your thing can tell him, and you can flex it from here. Or you can, like, draw lines, or you can draw, like, patterns. Or, or you can flex, or, you know, you black man. I did not bring the box. Okay. Wait, I see one. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like this. The whole project is like you just put it down or you lift it up and you see how comfortable you are to, to do it. And this is like the first technique. And then the second the second technique is gonna be here. It's gonna be different. I'm gonna show you. Like that. If you want to do a scratching, if you want to do like a scratching, this is what you do. If you want to do a scratching, this is what you do. You just pass, you just put the pants all over, like in here. You need some ankle spot, probably. This meant like um, the middle of the body of the dog, like this. And then you let it dry. If she's dry, it's going to be like a scratch. Just That's your line. Yeah. And your picture. It's a scratch. You don't have to let it dry. You can say it's like a little bit dry and you scratch it. Yeah. That's and, my favorite. Yeah. And that will give you this, this type. And, and then once that's dry, you can it white. Yeah, and once dry, you can it white, over white, and it's black and white. Color. And this one is, is faster. Yeah. yeah, it's like put white, black, like this, or you put black or white, and then you, you scratch it, and then you find it all over. Any questions? No. Ready? Yeah. Okay. The scratching people scratch me if I'm wrong, but the scratching technique is good for people who like to be really free. And yeah. So you, you have more freedom like the, the scratching is like free. So you can come up with some kind of form. So the scratching is more about like the form of more than that. So we're we gonna give you the dollar down. So uh, supplies for those of you who are here, your jars and paints are all back here. A note about I don't have enough for everyone to take one of each color. I'm suggesting that you share with your neighbors, please. Maybe you just take one or two colors at a time. Be green and violet, a little watery. If you find that they don't stick to the jar well, mix it with a little bit of white. And if you can keep the colors clean, it would be helpful because then we can reuse these jars. So if you're going to do any mix, there's paper plate that you can mix your colors with. Help yourself. 
And if we run out of jars, I can pour paint. You don't have to pour the paint. This is what I'm trying to say. There's paint in these jars. This is Help yourself, you got this. Don't forget if you have to put a scratch on the I find it to be like but you know. So, folks at home, you can begin. And if you're doing the line drawing technique, you want to start with the marker drawing first. Don't forget. So, you need a, a pretty good black Sharpie, not a fine point. You want one of the, the broad tips. Black Sharpies to do your drawing on the glass. And all the work is done on the back or the inside. If you're doing the scratching technique, you can just get started painting. Uh, there's some things in the chat. There's one this one. That's a thing. That's a Um, Laura, I don't know if you saw this chat from Lisa. She is our iPhone guest. Says I need to be unmuted and allow me access to be seen on video. That's my friend, Lisa. It's a message to everyone in, in chat. We did eventually see her. Lisa, I hope you were able to see us. If you can unmute and tell us you're in class, that would be great. I'm in. Awesome. Hope you're enjoying. Thank you. You're welcome. And folks at home, you can always just let us know if you need help or Put things in the chat. I will check periodically. You wanted me to put some of these after. A reminder: don't don't throw upside down. Like this person, I saw them there. But if you put it here. Don't put the head like over here. Okay? It's okay if you do. Chosen person playing. Standing on the head. Does anybody want to have. Uh, the coffin? No. Well, I, I have some prints if someone want to use print or use it on the um, imagination. It depends. You know, I have some print. Yes. 
Okay, this is uh, some of the examples. I uh, just uh, painted from uh, inside the job. Is inside the job. Okay, and another one is over here. If you want to work on this technique, which is which uh, something about painting the whole half of the job black, and then you will scratch it. As you can see over over here. So you paint it all, you paint half the job black, and then you work for this dry. You take the other side of your brush and you scratch it. When you scratch it with the line, stretching lines, and after you scratch it, you will just paint inside. You will paint. The whole process is done in the inside. There's nothing over over here. Thank you. I want to win it out. Your job. It is nice. Yeah. So you can also use other uh, other colors. Not only black color that you can use to paint half the color. You can use either black, um, green, yellow, red. You scratch it and you put the second layer. The Thank second you. layer should be a lighter color. Yeah. yeah. Right. If you put like the second layer, it's a good layer that's going to be visible over here because you're going to paint on it. And if anyone wanted me to want to use this print, so feel free to let me know and you can take it and. Um, Put it under the uh, the car and paint it, and outline the question and then you paint it. And folks at home, you can find images if you Google line drawings of African symbols. S Y M B O L S. You can find or line simple line drawings. I'm going to put it in the chat. You can Google simple line drawing of African like art. Just put the topic in the end. You have the, the, you just put it like at the end of the Folks at home, if you are looking for things to trace, I just put it in the chat. You can Google simple line drawings of African art symbols or African fabric patterns. Yeah. And you will find millions. Oh, if they of, have any image from newspaper or a book, they can yeah. they can use it. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to do African 
symbols. You can do line drawings of anything you want. For nature, trees, flowers. Absolutely. And if you have any questions, please do free pass. So let me know which one if you want images. I have uh the images over here. And, and just one reminder: if if you put a, if you try to clean the pen brush and it's too wet, it's gonna erase off the lines. Just keep the pen brush dry. If you try to clean with water and it's too watery, and you want to use it to paint, it's gonna erase off all the lines. And when you get the pen brush inside. And you can't, um, you can like stamp it like this. Look, oh, I'm stamping slowly. You just stamp it. You know, you can paint or use the, the stamping process. You just go slowly. Just stamp it like this. So if you are home, stamp it. You cannot stamp it. Yeah. Thank 
And, and you know what else I used to do when the pan was too short? I would just get those kind of steaks to use in uh, Chinese food, and I I kiss it. <laughs> yeah, just to the end. Yeah, or you take like another, or you take like another pan brush like this, and you tape it. You use two pan brushes. If it's too short, I would always have a tape. I would just like get the two pan brushes so that it will get it will get longer. Then bring any tape. It's gone. Yeah, always use your imagination with the pen brushes, and, you know. Mm -hmm. It occurred to me that we could put some pictures of the paintings up. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, I love those big ones. I mean, yeah. they're they're watching the smalls on the camera. Yeah. Oh. Which would you prefer, Ibu, people looking at your finished work or watching you paint? Okay, never mind. Well, people at home, if you have small short hand brushes and you have a tip, you can put them together like this and tape it. And that's going to get longer. And then it will get right inside the jar. And the reminder, too, if the paint is not. Add some white to it. The violet with the purple paint in the color is tiny. A thin thing in the lighter. And then you have to do it. Button wiggles, wiggles, and the small buttons will help. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can get the yellow. Okay. That's what I'll do. I'm going to have a nice light. Um, Ivo, may I put your web address in the chat box? Yes. So, for those of you interested in seeing more of Ibu's art, you can visit his website at www.ibundoy.com. That's correct, right, Ibu? Yes. And this is a good way of recycling jars. So we all these jars we brought today, we use them at home. So we don't throw them, we just keep them for the whole Yeah. If you're a patient and don't mind clutter. <laughs> <laughs> if your spouse happens to be another artist. You can yeah, get a bag of spaghetti while these jars. Are <laughs> <laughs> How is it going on? Good? Any questions? Yes. <laughs> And the question was, are the leaves that the the tribe got the same shape? <laughs> And what I mostly say to keep to people what I teach is that if you forget to write your name on the piece, at the end of the workshop it will be my fault. Because that's my workshop. <laughs> <laughs> and when I do that, when I say that the people are like, <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> would you want to say that the practice makes perfect? The first time you did reverse life painting, was it was it your best? Well, what? <laughs> <laughs> but nobody saw it. I just saw it myself and people myself in the book. <laughs> but you improved every time you did. Oh yes. Oh, okay. <laughs>
So you change it with yourself. Yeah. It reminds you like all the drawing inside the jar. For people at home, the drawing is inside the jar, not outside. Everything inside the jar. Please. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Oh, and even did you want to explain what not to do with these? Uh, when, when the fish is dry and taken home, since it's actually if they don't water, don't put water in it. No. Yeah, it's actually can when you go home, don't put water. Yeah, you can use it like put flowers, dry flowers, and pans. Yeah, mostly pans. It's our blinds. Yeah. Pennies. Yeah. I like to put markers and pencils in them. Yeah, that kind of thing. Paintbrushes, paper Yeah. Great. I like uh, I like doing glass painting in the summer, mostly when it's too hot because it gets dry very fast. Yeah. Yeah. It's a scratch and marking. So how, how many people are doing the scratch technique? I'm going to do that next. I don't have to do that. But I, when I first saw that, yeah. they said to the project, I said, I want to wear that. And then you right away said that. That's where you saw it. Yeah. And I said, well, I would literally could see that shirt. That would be what I had. Yeah, I how the shirt I wear like uh, or what did I put on it? Like ink on it. Right? And that looks like silk. Like it looks on good. the outside, it looks beautiful. It looks happy. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah, my um, you got to tell me. My daughter is from Senegal. Yeah. My son's girlfriend is from Senegal. Yeah. Oh, okay. She lived to it. I've invited her to our. Yeah, she was going to come. She she just started a new job the last few months, but she's very serious. She wanted to meet her. Job. But yeah, I definitely have to. And then I said to her, why don't you take the day off today? But she's yeah. like the same woman. Yeah. She has a good day. So she couldn't say that. But soon, I'll get that here. Thank you. Okay. And here, I'm, uh, it's not wet yet, but I'm trying to find the background. And this one, it's not wet. It's not dry. It's still wet. Right here. But I can't, I'm going to paint the wrong one. Yeah. And right now, I'm, I'm, I'm something. I can't, I don't want to paint over it because oh, if I do that. Guys, this, you might want to hear what he's saying. Right. So I, I am painting this one. I don't know how much time we got left. Okay. Yeah. Right, right now, if you're painting, I, I advise you to wait till you're this right. Yeah. But right now, just a little bit over here, and I paint around. I just stamp it. Now I'm stamping. You see? Instead of stroking. Instead of stroking, stamping. I'm just I'm just stamping. I'm stamping around, and it's dry. I will stroke. Just stamping. Take a bigger brush, and you just stamp. It will just stamp around. It. Yeah, there is white. Yeah. Oh, right here. You see, how do you see it? Okay. So this this one this one is uh is wet. Look what happened if I pen on a wet on a wet. Look if I pen on a wet pen. Mm -hmm. It smears, and you don't want that. No, just wait till it's dry a little bit. Just paint around and wait till it's dry a little bit. And you start stroking. Yeah, this one's stroking. Yeah. Okay. Just like something like this. And you paint around when the paint is wet. There are enough jars you can start a second one while you're waiting for the first one. This is like, I'm not bringing these home. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't take a second if you don't want it. You got to go to do another work. Done. Like, like the second since it's after. So, like, if someone is uh, is like done and want to have another piece, I want to do a little scratch one on the other side on the It's acrylic paint, but it's not, I have to be honest, some of the colors are not the best, but some of it is really good paint, and some of it is, most of it comes from Michael's, and it's called Artist's Law, which is not great quality paint, but some of it is big black acrylic paint, which is much high quality, much more high quality. Yeah, that, this is the artist a lot. I don't know what they did in the manufacturing, which is why I'm saying either mix this with the yellow or white. Okay. Uh, and look at look at this one. Is the one cup I'm gonna scratch. It is um it is a little bit dry, and I can put the other side of the pen brush and start scratching. Yeah, you see. How the lines are showing up? Yeah, it's just like this. Maybe put the white paper. You see the lines when you scratch? 
right? This after scratching, I've done the work. Just give it like 10 more minutes. And when it's dry, I will put like, um, I will put white paint all over. And the line is going to be visible just like in this, in this one. And if I want to have bigger lines, I keep on, I can't even use the pen brush, this one. You see? If I use this, the dry one, the scratching is going to be bigger. <laughs> yeah. You see, these lines are bigger when I use them. And you can't even like have more stuff. Oh, it's okay, it's well. Now I will, I'm going to let it dry for a little while. And then I will uh, come and use um, the white paint. And I will have something like this. You want to put up some of your pictures now? No, no, that's not working. I was trying to maybe think about what that new machine from it, but that. I 
Any questions? Thank you. Scribbling and scratching them out. Yeah. <laughs> Eating. Yeah. Also, things like a splash of a lot of colors. Well, yeah, I agree that I can do one. It's just so nice. A lot of colors on it. It's just. Everybody at home doing good? Remember, you can put concerns or questions or ideas in the chat, or you can always yell out. Are you having fun? I'm weeding out my dried out acrylics. Oh, that's a good idea. Is that Margo? Yeah. If you have mixing acrylics with water doesn't always work, but if you have um, extender, some kind of acrylic gloss or medium. No, I don't. 
Well, then water. Try water. Um, I don't know if we'll have time to share, but Laura, would you be willing to walk around with the camera like you do in our Wednesday class? I I would do it soon because. And then folks at home, you're always, if you want to share what you're working on, I can spotlight you so I can see. Like, like here, I'm doing the background. Uh, let's look at Ibrahim. Yeah. But I, I'm going to use several kinds of colors. Like I have, you see, I just found it. That yellow is awesome. Yeah, I just found it, and I need blue. Yeah. This is how I do my background. Stamp with the brush rather yeah. than stroking. Yeah, if you stamp with the brush in uh, the setting in the, inside the jar, it's faster. And it sticks better, right? It sticks better. You see, this one is this one is done. It's stamping. I can leave it like this. When it's dry, I put another layer. Or just leave it like this. You see how fast it is when you stamp? Yeah. Stamping is faster. This one is is done. Now let me see the other one I will join. Black and white, I have to clean my brush and keep it dry before I let it. I'm, I'm here working on the black and white. What I'm going to do is just turn the edges first. <laughs> You see when you when you stamp it, when you stamp it and you see the white lines right now, it's not completely dry, but I'm just showing you. You see, I'm having gray, black, and white. We're using the curve thing. Yeah. And I'm going to have this. Yes, um, you can do this. I should have brought this one. Yeah, and look at this one. So where is the sound? It's the black and white. This is the stamping with the one I stamped. Yeah, so it gives me gray and uh, black and white. I think it's it's easier and faster to stamp when you uh, when you're doing um, this kind of painting, in your, this kind of job painting. It's faster this way. Yeah. It's stamping. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see another one. Yeah. yeah, this is one piece over here. It's a cat. <laughs> And it's one is scratching and stamping. Another one over here. Scratching those two. Oh, 
Laura is going to walk around the room with her camera and share with folks at home what you've been creating. Now, you see, your face is covered now. The white. Is it dry? Wow, look at Eva. Look at the black background. Really nice. And uh, this is my most exciting part of every class because I so love how everybody gets the same directions, but everybody creates art that is unique to themselves. And everybody's work's beautiful. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful one. Yeah. Nice. I forgot I'm not the teacher. <laughs> Uh, this, this this one is also very nice. Yeah, you want to show the background. You got to put a piece of paper inside. That's that's how it's gonna look like when he paints it black. What kind of paint? Is it scratch or paint? Both. You use both. <laughs> There you go. Whatever you said today, I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. You use like different kind of technique, like drawing inside the job right. and scratching. You combine the two things. Yeah. See it on the screen? Yeah, it's really good. Hello, beautiful. Hello, beautiful. Hello, beautiful. I, mean, I like it. I like your colors. Wow, Robin. Cool, Love it. 
smart to draw on the bottom of the jar. first in the queue. I'm Margo. Margo, you want to share? Yeah. 
Laura's going to spotlight. Sorry, Kitty. Oh, oh, yeah. Not today, Liz. Sorry. What up? Yeah. Child would drop me. Okay. Um, I don't know who this is. Oh, Pat. Yeah, if she's willing to share. I'm very slow and I don't think you can really see, but I'll turn on my camera. And... Try, Pat. Okay. Um, uh, technical difficulty working on it. Camera. That is the person who left all the jars yesterday. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the jars. Oh, good. Okay. Here you are. Uh, my camera, I don't know. Something's wrong. You see? Beautiful. Wow. Oh my gosh, you did a lot of backwards writing. Awesome. Oh, Very good. Uh, I have a mason jar that was kind of cracked, so I thought I would turn it into a like a maybe a gardening port or something. So I'm working on the glass right now on the bottom. That's nice. I would be careful though, you might want to line it with plastic. Mm. Where you oh. put your dirt in. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. With the, you. Um, with the writing and the colors and the transparency, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Um, that's Laura. Looks like we lost a few people during. Margo, can you get on video? Well, Margo, if you come back, we want to see what you've created. So good to see you. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> okay, Margo is here. Sorry, I just got some news about somebody who was in surgery. Um, it's horrible, but I'll share. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Let's see if we can get some light on the subject. There we go. That, that's beautiful, Margo. The, uh, the face disappeared on this. Red yeah, I, I like the uh, the white background. It's really beautiful. Oh, Margo. Yeah. I had limited color. I could use white set off the other. You had the balloon, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah. It's beautiful. She has three balloons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a duck. Yeah, or what's supposed to be a duck. A blue duck, and yeah. then I, I saw what somebody else did on the bottom, so I did that too. <laughs> I've got to wait for it to dry and do a background. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. I, I like that. Thank you. I like yours better. Right, those are nice. <laughs> this is <what>, third attempt. <laughs> In my defense. <laughs> yeah, that's nice, Tom. It's a beautiful work. It's a great workshop. People done a lot of a um, lot of beautiful pieces. So I enjoy it. I really like it. You know. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I have the Let me see. I'm 
same song in the words of Killing Wizard oh, Sun. Killing Wizard Sun can't go to bed. This is out of control, man. I see what you I was a little bit older. I couldn't get my hands together. Yeah, you Oh, I love that. Where is like the younger one? This is what I use. Oh, I love that. Let me see that face. Are they like Vikings? Yeah. I love that. That looks like me. <laughs> now, this one I was teaching in a program and they ordered it. But you can have like, um, I'm going to see on the street. Man, no competition with me. Take the glass off the street. Okay. Hold on. Oh, thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. Right. Every time I see a picture, it's a famous actor. No, this is. This is. I'm not. I love this tie. Yeah, I want to show you. Yeah. It's well. It's well. Yeah. Well, you can do it now. Well, gotta get a husband and get out of the house. Back. I saw some. Like, look at my legs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. wow, this was my workshop for the uh, last year. Well, it's cool. This has been like two or three years ago. That's nice. Are you too? I love Cell animation. Yeah. And one day I was going to the milk shop and I was like, we're going to be thinking about what one of the kids was like. I don't think it works. I was like, what the hell is it? And I'm yeah. like seeing flowers and yeah. That's what I was saying. You got water lights thing going on. And this, this one is on, uh, well, oh, on the window. It's on a window pane? Yeah. It's on the window pane. Yeah. It's on the window pane. You use what you got. I know, right? I just want to know. It's in the eyes now. Yeah. 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 Uh, 
All right, dear friends at home, we gotta go. Until next time. Stay warm. As we say in French, a bientôt. And shameless plug for myself, every Wednesday morning from 10 to 12, Art with Liz. This coming Wednesday, we're doing